Sahana Bhavatu Sahano Bunatu Sahaviryang Karavabahai Tejasvi Navadita Mastu Mavid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 May the Divine Being look over us lovingly as a mother and father. May the Divine Being support and nourish us as a mother and father. May we have the strength and skill to study together the art of spirituality. <clears throat> May no misunderstandings arise amongst us. Om peace, peace. Peace be unto us and to all beings everywhere. So, studying the life of Holy Mother, as you know, we were recently introduced to Radhu. Radhu was, as described to us, Yoga Maya, that which could hold Mother's, Holy Mother's mind and attention to the needs of human beings directly as a person-to-person -person activity. Of course, the Mother of the Universe is always concerned about us in a disembodied sense. But for all those years, until 1920, just a hundred years ago, Mother was with us physically. And it would have been very difficult for her to stay without some attachment. So Sri Ramakrishna arranged for this attachment and he told her that Radhu would be her yoga maya, that which held her mind to the worldly. It confused some people. Some people didn't understand how can she possibly be so involved with this family, this child. How can she be so attached? And she just simply said impatiently, one of the few times when we hear of her being actually impatient with someone else, you don't understand. And indeed, we, we cannot. But we can empathize with mother in dealing with someone who, as we will learn, became so difficult. So now I'll start reading. As Radhu grew older, she became a difficult person, eccentric, petulant. and stubborn. She not only disobeyed Holy Mother, but also abused her, cursed her, and treated her badly. In fact, Mother left for a pilgrimage in South India in December. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> in fact, Mother left, left for a pilgrimage in South India in December 1910. She and her brothers arranged Radhu's betrothal to Man, Manupata? Manapata? Man, uh, Manmata? Manmata. Manmata Chattopadhyay, a son of a wealthy man in the nearby Tajpur village. Radhu was then 12 and Manmata was 15. On 1 April 1911, Holy Mother returned to Calcutta and left for Jairambati on 17 May. She stopped at Kualpura Ashrama. If you remember, there was a little monastery there. She stopped at Kualpura Ashrama briefly and asked the residents to help her with the wedding. 
A few days later, Swami Sharadananda, Yogin Ma, Golap Ma, and two Brahmacharinis, no, two Brahmacharins, came to Jairambati to attend to Radhu's wedding, which was set for 10 June 1911. Although Radhu's family was poor compared to Manmata's, Swami Sardananda spent money without stint for the wedding to make Holy Mother happy. The devotees presented Radhu with jewelry. The devotees now, notice, the devotees presented Radhu with jewelry, including a gold crown. Holy Mother was happy seeing Radhu bedecked with gold and silver from head to foot. Manmata's family demanded a larger dowry from Sharadananda and Kedar Datta, later Swami Keshavananda, protested. Holy Mother called him aside privately and said that he was not, it was not auspicious to quarrel before the marriage ceremony. The village priest officiated at the ceremony and Prashana gave his niece Radhu away. The next day, the bridegroom's party and the people of Jairambati were entertained with a sumptuous feast, and they blessed the newly married couple. Radhu left for Tajpur with her husband the following day, as was customary. However, Radhu did not want to live at her husband's house, so both she and Manmata came to stay with Holy Mother. Now you can imagine... <laughs> Now we have this difficult child, uh, a, a young man who is from a wealthy and privileged family, um, obviously not necessarily that uh, respectful of Holy Mother. Before the wedding, an astrologer had examined Radhu's horoscope. He predicted that she would become a widow. After Manmata had been married to Radhu for some time, he asked Holy Mother for initiation. She was not eager to initiate a relative, but finally she initiated him. She remarked, one should not interfere with divine dispensation, but Radhu might escape her widowhood by the force of this initiation. After her wedding, Radhu began to have physical problems and became even more moody and irritable. Holy Mother lamented to her disciple Kedhardatta, my son Radhu was rather pleasant when she was younger. Now she is married and suffers from various ailments. I am afraid this daughter of an insane mother may herself become insane. Alas, I am bringing up, alas, am I bringing up a mad person? At the master's command, Holy Mother had embraced this girl as Yoga Maya. And as a result, she now had to endure Radhu's verbal abuse. One day, Holy Mother cautioned a woman who wanted to adopt a son. Never do such a thing. Do your duties to all, but love you must, you must not bestow upon anybody except God. If you love human beings, there will be no end of suffering for you. Now this is a very great instruction for us. As Swami Prabhupada remarked, I know you don't like to hear it, but as I've told you many times, the only one who is truly your own is God. I'm going to repeat that because it's such an important aphorism of Swami Prabhupada's. I know you don't like to hear it, but as I've told you many times, the only one who is truly your own is God. So Holy Mother gave this instruction. You must not bestow love upon anybody except God. If you love human beings, there will be no end of suffering for you. 
Now, there's love with attachment and love without attachment. Love with attachment is the one that produces suffering. Love without attachment, love of the person because you recognize the self within, the divine within the person, that in, in which there would be no attachment, that will not bring suffering. Look at how much I suffer on account of Radha, the mother said. As I said, um, Manmata was a, the son of a wealthy family, and so we find it reflected here. Manmata was a carefree person. One day at Udbodhan, Udbodhan house, Manmata went out and Radhu was restless for him. Holy Mother expressed her agony to a woman disciple. So when, when we hear that Radha was restless for him, this is not a, uh, uh, this is a kind of a, a polite understatement. Hmm? Manmata went out and Radha was restless for him. Holy Mother expressed her agony to a woman disciple. Look at the master's Leela, his play. My mother's family was so noble but look at my present companions. This, this one, Surabha, Surabhala, is totally mad. And that one, Nalini, is on the verge of insanity. And now look at, the, and now look at that one, Radhu, my child. I wonder at this person I raised. She is completely silly. She is standing on, this, on the porch holding on to the railing, eagerly waiting for her husband to return. Then you hear some music in a house. There, there you hear some music in a house of ill repute. So the, the implication is that Manmata has gone to this house of Ill, Ill repute. There you hear some music in a house of ill repute. Radha is afraid that Manmata may enter the place. Day and night she watches him. What attachment! I never dreamt she would be so attached. So this is what Holy Mother is talking about when she says that love of human beings in this attached way is what brings such suffering, even to the point of making you mentally unbalanced. Another day in Udbodhan house, Radhu angrily said to the mother, what do you know? Can you comprehend the importance of a husband? At this, the mother replied with a laugh, you're right. My husband was a naked sannyasi. And it's wonderful how mother could could reply in that fashion. Hmm. Holy Mother told Radhu on another occasion, you have been nursed by a lioness, speaking of herself, you have been nurse, nursed by a lioness and you are acting like a vixen. I have brought you up with such care and you have not imbibed any part of my virtues. You've gotten everything from your mother. Radu became angry, pulled down her veil and turned her head away. Mother laughed and said, you cannot get along without me. And now you are hiding uh, your face from me. Sushala Majpadar, Majumdar. Sushila, Sushila Majumdar recorded Radhu's misbehavior in her reminiscences. Radhu returned from school at four o'clock. When she finished her refreshment, the mother told her, Radhu, come here, I shall braid your hair. No, I shall do it myself, replied Radhu. As the mother took a comb to braid her hair, 
Radhu took the comb and began to hit the mother with it. The mother remarked, mad girl, what shall I do with her? Meanwhile, Yogan Ma came in and seeing Radhu hitting the mother, she said, what is this? Why should Radhu hit our mother? I'll punish her. Still Radhu continued to hit the mother. Then the mother said, now I shall call Sharat. I can't bear the pain anymore. When Yogin Ma informed Sharadananda, he immediately came out from his room and shouted from downstairs, Radhu, don't hit the mother. Hearing his voice, Radhu stopped and moved away from her. Kusum then braided Radhu's hair. It's, it's just appalling, really, to think of the mother of the universe in such a situation. But here we have it. When mother took her human form and took on the mission that Sri Ramakrishna left her, which was to be the one who was mother, that is, guru and, and caretaker for many, many, many. Mother needed this very difficult situation to keep her mind sufficiently attached to worldly activities and worldly concerns that she did not go away. <clears throat> Between 1911 and 1917, Radhu developed neurasthenia and from time to time suffered from fits of hysteria. One evening in Ubodan House, Holy Mother placed a poultice on Radhu's abdomen. When a devotee asked, what happened to Radhu? Mother replied, Radhu has been attacked by, this, by, by the same pain. I wonder whether that, that this horrible pain, I wonder where this horrible pain came from. So many doctors are attending her and I am promising offerings to so many deities, but all to no avail. In spite of her illness in 1910-1911, Radhu went on pilgrimage with the mother to South India and in 1912 to Varanasi, see chapter 20, chapters 21 and 22. So we have here this very, very difficult situation that mother is enduring. And you can see why from time to time she wants to be in Jairambati where she can relax a little bit. And there's some more scope than just these few rooms for Radhu to roam about in. On 8 May 1913, Holy Mother was in Jairambati. Radhu was indisposed, laid up with pain and fever. Surabala began to scold Holy Mother, saying, You are about to kill my daughter with medicines. Now, Surabala was truly mentally unbalanced. There's no way that you could reason her with reason with her. So when she developed this idea, there was no way that mother could make any sense telling her what the medicines were and what they were for. When she continued her verbal abuse, Holy Mother called her brother, Barada, who chased Surabala out of the house. Holy Mother could bear it no longer and lamented, I was married to one who never addressed me as Tui. Uh, that is in the familiar form, the, the one looking down to someone of a lower status, uh, 
addresses them as Tui. I was married to one who never addressed me as Tui. And look at Radhu's mother, how she abuses me day and night. I do not know what sin I committed to deserve all this. Perhaps I worshiped Shiva with a thorny bell leaf, <laughs> and that thorn has now grown, has now become Radhu's mother. Now, you can understand that mother was being ironic here. Hmm. I, I don't think that she really thought she had offended Shiva in any way. This is just her way of talking about the yoga maya that she's experiencing. Holy Mother was passing through a hard time with Radha. On 12 May 1913, she said, my mind my mind now does not dwell upon Radu even in the slightest degree. I am sick of her illness. I force my mind upon her. I pray to the master saying, oh Lord, please divert my mind a little to Radu. Otherwise, who will look after her? I have never seen such an illness. Perhaps in her former birth, she died of an illness for which she had not performed any penance to redeem the effects of bad karma. <coughs> Perhaps in her prior birth, she died of an illness for which she had not performed any penance to redeem, to redeem the effects of bad karma. I have in mind to do these two things. One, to engage a medium to find the cause of Radu's illness and the other to undertake the hmm, Chandra, Chandra Yama, is that right? Chand somebody pronounce that for me. Chandrayana. Chandrayana. Uh -huh. Penance for her. Chandrayana. Chandrayana, Chandrayana. In January 1918, Holy Mother was in Jairambati when she became very ill. So this was just a couple of years before her death now. So she's beginning to experience what these things that later took her life. Swami Sardananda traveled with Dr. Kanjilal, Dr. Satish Chakravarti, Yogin Ma, Golap Ma, and Sharda, later Bharati Prana, to Jairambati to look after her. Bharati Prana, by the way, became very, very instrumental in, in uh, uh, continuing the uh, the, the female, uh, the feminine monastic side of uh, the masters, uh, what later became Shardamund. In a short time, mother felt better and Shardananda and the doctors returned to Calcutta. Holy mother then went to Koalpara. There her fever re relapsed There, her fever relapsed and her condition became critical. At that time, Radhu suddenly left for her husband's house. She said to the mother, you have many devotees to look after you, but who else do I have except my, my husband? Holy Mother told her disciples about this incident and said, the way Radhu cut the bond from of my the way Radhu cut the bond of my attachment yesterday and left for her husband's house worried me. I thought perhaps that the master does not want me to ha live any longer. My doting on Radhu is nothing but a form of Maya, which I am holding in order to function. And there is mother's statement about this. Uh, 
I thought that perhaps the master does not want to me want me to live any longer. My doting on Radu is nothing but a form of Maya, which I am holding in order to function. Okay, it's just about the half hour. Are there any comments or questions so far? Anything at all anyone like to, would like to contribute or ask a question about? Okay. Human beings judge others according to their own understanding. They do not have the insight to evaluate the behavior of divine beings. And there should be, I think, a, a therefore. <laughs> Human beings judge others according to their own understanding. Uh, and so we have a human understanding. They, therefore, they do not have the insight to evaluate the behavior of divine beings. Now and then, Holy Mother's disciples and devotees complain to her about her attachment to Radha. Sarala recalled, one afternoon the mother was taking on, was talking on various topics. She said, people think I worry about Radha and am strongly attached to her, but they do not know that without this attachment, my body would, would not have been preserved after the master's death. He himself kept the body alive through Radu for the sake of his work. When my mind withdraws from her, I shall give up the body. And that proved to be the case. When my mind withdraws from her, I shall give up the body. In 1918, the mother was in bed with a high fever in Kualpura ashram. Yogin Ma and Sharat Maharaj were attending her. Even seeing her serious condition, Radhu left for her husband's home. The mother did not want her to go. Then the mother lamented to Yogin Ma. Look, Yogin, Radhu is left abandoning me. Yogin Ma replied, why shouldn't she go, mother? Don't you remember that you walked all the way to Dakshineshwar to be with the master? The mother smiled a little. And then this was and, and it, when mother was hearing, if we recall, this was when mother was hearing that Sri Ramakrishna had become a madman. And so she finally decided to go and see for herself and serve him if she could. And uh, she, when she got there, of course, she found that he wasn't mad at all. This is what, uh, this is what Yogin Ma is referring to. Don't you remember that you walked all the way to Dakshineshwar to be with the master? The mother smiled a little and then said, you are right, Yogin. On 10 April, Sardananda received a cable saying that the mother was ill again. And on that very night, he sent Dr. Kanjilal to Kualpura. On 17 April, Sardananda brought Dr. Chakrabarti and Yogin Ma to Holy Mother. She slowly recovered under their care. The details aren't given here, but they are given in other biographies. This was really a very difficult illness that mother went through. Uh, and uh, they, they really did despair of her life at one point. By May 1918, she had gained some strength. And Sardananda wanted her to go with him to Calcutta. She agreed, but wanted to visit Jairambati for a week to see her relatives and the villagers before going to Calcutta. 
she sent Brahmachari Bharata, later Swami Ishanananda, to Tajpur to give to bring Radhu to Jairambati. As soon as Radhu got down from the palanquin, the mother embraced her, saying, Come, my child, Radhu. The mother realized that Radhu had become independent. Hmm. Holy Mother asked Radhu to go with her to Calcutta, but Radhu declined. The mother accepted her decision with tearful eyes. Radhu bowed down to Holy Mother. Unperturbed, the mother blessed her and calmly said goodbye. This was the first time Holy Mother had gone to Calcutta without Radhu since Radhu's birth. On her way back, Mother stopped at Kualpura for a day, and as her body was weak, a horse carriage was hired for her, while the others went by bullock carts. Now this is, as I said, this is near the end. Mother only lived another uh, year and a half or so, two years at the most. I forget that. I think it was in March, that she, March 2000. Uh, in March 1920, she left, but I'm not sure. So the mother's body was weak, so a horse carriage was hired for her, while the others went by bullock carts. Sarla wrote, One day in Udbodhan, Holy Mother said, Look, when Radu left me, cutting my attachment to her, I thought perhaps this time my body would not last but I see still there is more of the master's work to be done. And as we'll hear, a lot was done in the last two years of her life. Even Yoginma, one of the mother's intimate companions, once felt some doubt about the mother and said to herself, Sri Ramakrishna was the embodiment of renunciation, and the mother is engrossed in the world, preoccupied day and night with the thought of her brothers, sister-in-law, and nephews and nieces. I can't understand this. One day soon after this, she was seated on the bank of the Ganges, meditating when Sri Ramakrishna appeared in a vision before her. Now, let's, let's all envision this in our minds. Yogin Ma had become confused and judgmental about the mother. And so the master, now many years gone from the body, appeared in a vision before her. The master said, do you see what is being carried by the waters of the Ganges? Yogin Ma saw the corpse of a newborn baby smeared with blood, with the placenta still attached to it. She also saw that thousands of people were offering worship to the holy water of the river. The master said to Yogin Ma, can anything make the Ganges impure? Regard her, meaning holy mother, regard her in the same way. Never have any doubt about her. Remember, she is not different from this, meaning himself. What a powerful vision for Yogin Ma to have of reassurance. And what a wonderful image for us to hold. Nothing can make the mother impure. Returning from the Ganges, Yogin Ma bowed down to Holy Mother and said, Mother, please forgive me. Why, Yogin? What happened? The mother inquired. Yogin Ma then narrated the incident and said, I, I, lay, I, I harbored doubt about you, but today the Master has revealed the truth to me. I harbored doubt about you, but today the master has revealed the truth to me. Smiling, the mother said, don't feel bad. Doubt is natural for the human mind. 
you know, listen up, everybody. <laughs> this is such a potent instruction for us. Don't feel bad. Doubt is natural for the human mind. Doubt will arise and again and again. <clears throat> Doubt will arise, arise, and again faith will come. One develops faith in this way. So let me read that properly. Yogin Maad confessed her doubt. Don't feel bad. Doubt is natural for the human mind. Doubt will arise and again faith will come. One develops faith in this way. This finally, thus finally one attains firm faith. The words from the mother of the universe, don't feel bad about your doubts. Don't feel bad. Look them squarely in the face and then return to your spiritual practices and faith will replace the doubt and then the doubt will come again. This is why it says in the evening prayer, Thou hast finished with fear and with doubt of Sri Ramakrishna. And he can share that with us. Thou hast finished with fear and with doubt, standing firm in the vision of God. That is the only way that our doubts are finally dispelled when we have this sense of the living presence. Um, it doesn't have to be a vision. It doesn't have to be a visual thing. But it's, it's only then that our doubts are finally laid to rest. That when we have the, the, this knowledge of the living presence within us. This is such a crucial point. We have plenty of time. Is there any comment or question about this? issue of doubt and what ex what Yogan Ma experienced, what her vision was, what Holy Mother said, what was just said after that in commentary. Anything at all? Everybody's very quiet tonight. Okay. <laughs> in the middle of June 1918, Radhu wrote a letter to Holy Mother. She wanted to come to Calcutta because she, because she had an abscess on one of her fingers. Holy Mother wrote to Kedar and Koalpara, Radhu is not well. She wants to come to Calcutta with her husband and mother. If Radhu thinks it is necessary, then send Brahmachari Bharata to accompany them. Accordingly, Radhu and her companions went to Koalpara, and from there the, Brahm the Brahmacharini accompanied them to the mother's residence in Calcutta. Dr. Kanjilal began to treat Radhu, and within a couple of weeks she recovered. Radhu and her husband had a room upstairs in Udbodan House. Radhu became pregnant in August 1918, and toward the end of the year, her neurasthenia became worse. She became very weak and could not bear any noise. It was difficult for Holy Mother to care for Radhu in a Bodhan house. It was a noisy place. There was a shrine upstairs, a purification department downstairs, a publication department downstairs. There was a shrine upstairs, a publication department downstairs, and many visiting devotees. On the morning of 3 December 1918, Sardananda sent a message to Swami Shivananda at Belramat, telling him that Holy Mother and Radhu would go to Leggett House, located north of the old Belur Shrine. Immediately the monks 
made that place ready. But at three o'clock, another message came saying that Holy Mother and Radhu had moved to the boarding house of Nivedita's school. They'd moved to the boarding house of Nivedita's school where young girls who attended the school, that was where they would come to stay. So she'd gone to Radhu's, uh, to, to Nivedita's boarding house, which was on a secluded lane. They had moved there because Radhu would not have been able to bear the sound of the bells and conch of, Bel Roma, of the Belur Monastery, Belur Monastery shrine and the whistles of the steamers plying the Ganges. I don't know if any of you know, well, I'm sure some of you know, but if, if all of you know about neurasthenia, it makes you, uh, you can't bear light, you can't bear sensory stimulation. So uh, uh, if you want to ever, if you, if you ever want to read uh, a description of its effects, read the work of Marcel Proust, who suffered from it. So the next morning, Swami Shivananda sent Brahmachari Bharata to the mother with some vegetables and flowers for, from Belramat. When Bharata arrived at the boarding house, Holy Mother said to him, I am now here with this turbulent ocean, meaning Radhu. What will happen, Bharata? Now wait and see how many days Radhu will stay here. She's always lying down and cannot stand any noise. I don't know, my son, what kind of disease is this? Only the master knows how she will be free from this illness. Brahmachari Bharata visited the mother regularly every two or three days. One day the mother said to him, Radhu does not like this place anymore. She is asking me to take her to Jairambati, but look at her condition. There are no doctors or medical facilities there. It would be easier to get them here. Radhu is very stubborn and does not stop until her wish is fulfilled. Let us wait and see what happens next. So Radhu was in, in a really quite desperate condition. On Swami Vivekananda's birthday, 26 January 1919. <clears throat> now, just to refresh our memories, Swami Vivekananda had left the body 4th of July, 1902. So he'd been gone uh, some uh, 17 years now. On Swami Vivekananda's birthday, 26 January 1919, Saradananda sent a devotee to Belarmat to ask Brahmachari Bharada to return to Calcutta immediately. The mother had decided to go to Jairambati the next day. In the evening, Bharada arrived at Udbodhan house and met Swami Saradananda, who sent him to see to, to the mother. He went upstairs and saw her seated in the middle of the room with some coconut ropes for binding the bedding and the trunks. So the mother was looking after this herself. When she saw Bharata, she said, I'm going to Jairambati tomorrow with this turbulent ocean. Will you go with me? You, boy, you boys are my only support there. Barda replied, whatever your command, whatever you command will be done. Of course I will go with you. Relieved, the mother said, my son, take these ropes, pack everything and, and the bundles, pack everything, pack everything and the bundles up. I was just waiting for you. 
Barda and Holy Mother packed the baggage of Radu, Maku, and others until 11 o'clock that night. When Barda came downstairs, Sardananda told him, I want you to stay with the mother and help her as long as she wants you. Barda joyously agreed. He remained with Holy Mother and served her until her last day. Early in the morning of 27 January 1919, Holy Mother left by horse carriage for the train with Radhu, Surabala, Maku, and her son Neda, Neda, Nalini, Nalini, and Manda, Mandakini Roy, a widow disciple and attendant of the mother, as well as Brahmachari Garan, Dwijan, later Swami Ganeshananda, Ganganeshananda, uh, how is that? Gang Gangeshananda, and Brahmachari Bharata. The mother and her woman companions traveled in a reserved second class compartment, and the men went in interclass coach, an in interclass coach. The mother sat on a blanket on the floor of the coach and extended her legs to relieve her rheumatism. Now, this is something that hasn't been remarked on much, but mother, throughout all of this time, from the time she slept on that cold stone floor in the Nahabad at Dakshineshwar, she had developed uh, rheumatism in her legs. The knees, uh, her knees especially were painful. So she was sitting on a blanket on the floor with her legs extended to relieve her rheumatism. After arriving in Vishnupur, Vishnupur the party went to Sureshwar Sen's house, which was kept ready for Holy Mother. They stayed there for three days, for two days. One morning, Sureshwar brought an astrologer who read the palms of Radhu and Maku. He predicted that Radhu would not have an easy delivery and that Maku would have several children, but they would not see each other. And Maku would have several children, but they would not see each other. This made Maku very upset. She reported this to the mother, crying. Holy Mother was concerned that Neda was then two and a half years old and Maku was pregnant. She called the astrologer privately and asked how she could how she could counteract Maku's destiny. He suggested Maku should listen to the Chandi attentively for three Tuesdays. And that is, you know, the Devi Mahatmyam, the story of uh, the mother's, uh, the mother's triumph over uh, the Asuras and Daityas on three separate occasions and the hymns about that. The astrologer suggested Maku should listen to the Chandi attentively for three Tuesdays and perform a fire ceremony and a ritualistic worship. Later, Mother arranged for this. On the morning of 29 January, the party left for Jairambati in six bullock carts. Brahmachari Bharata recorded a marvelous story concerning the mother's presence of my presence of mind strong common sense and ability to adapt to time and situation it was the winter of 1919 holy mother and her company holy mother and her party went from calcutta to vishnupur by train and then by six bullet carts to koalpur on the way, we stopped at Jaipur, eight miles, eight miles from Vishnupur, where the cook began to prepare 
where the cook began to prepare dal near a roadside inn. The mother was happy to see the arrangements for cooking. She washed her hands and feet in the nearby pond and then helped by cutting vegetables. This was the mother always, always, always being serviceful. She washed her hands and feet in a nearby pond and then helped by cutting vegetables. The cooking was nearly done when the cook accidentally broke the earthen rice pot while removing the extra foamy water. The cooked rice was scattered over the ground. What to do? We were in a dilemma. We thought that if we brought if we bought an, brought another pot and cooked more rice, it would be too late to reach Kualpara. And moreover, the road was not safe. We still had to go another four miles, 14 miles. We still had to go another 14 miles. The mother was not upset at all. She slowly removed the foam from the rice with a straw ladle and collected the rice that had not touched the ground. She then washed her hands, took out the master's picture from her tin box and placed it on the corner of the box. On a sal leaf, she put some rice, dal and vegetables and placed this in front of the master. With folded hands, she pray, prayed, master, you have arranged this food for us today. Please eat it now, quickly, while it is warm. Observing the mother's unconventional behavior, we began to laugh. The mother then told us, look, one should act and adapt according to circumstances. Now all of you sit down and I shall serve the food. The mother's women companions and the rest of us sat on the ground. She scooped rice with a wooden ladle from the top of the heap and put it on our leaf plates one after another and then added other dishes. She also took food in the same way and began to eat, ex extending her legs. She commented, this food, the food is delicious. We hurriedly finished our lunch, packed the luggage, and resumed the journey. We reached Kualpara Ashram at 11 p.m. In other words, quite late at night. Okay. Well, there's a long footnote here. Um, let's leave off right there. Any Anything from anyone? Any questions, comments? Um, Brother Shankara? Yes, I am. Um, the concept of yoga maya is a little confusing for me to grasp. Um, in Mahabharata also, um, um, I think Krishna's uh, Yogmaya was supposedly born as uh, Yashoda's daughter and then uh, they were exchanged to save Krishna and Yogmaya supposedly just slipped out of the hands and disappeared and made a prophecy. What yeah. exactly is Yogmaya? What exactly is Yogmaya? <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> the, the, how do we understand? Yogmaya well, let's take the two words that have been put together. Yoga is both union and detachment. 
union with the divine and detachment from the world but when we combine it with the word maya maya is the illusion that any of this is happening at all hmm? as uh, vashishta said to rama and Shankaracharya temporized a little bit. This isn't really happening at all. This is a projection of the divine presence. And that projection is called Maya. It is, according to Vashishta, nothing more than a vibration of consciousness. Yoga Maya is that special kind of Maya that has a the effect of holding us here. Radhu was called Yoga Maya because mother's concern for her, which was genuine, it was not a, it was not an affectation. Something about Radhu was compelling enough to cause mother to hold her consciousness here. So all of us, just as all of us are bhaktas, though we may not correctly identify what it is that we, our devotion is to, it may be to wealth or to fame or some other form or aspect of the divine, because this is all the divine in nothing more than name and form. So that which binds us to the idea that name and form deserves our attention is Yoga Maya. Is that clear? Wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you, Brother Shankara. And because I was having a hard time wrapping. I mean, I was seeing that as a person and um, having a hard time sort of relating. The, the person is just an objectification of it. Thank you. Very good question. Very good question. And I hope there, there were other people that were that were uh, that, that, that 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 made some sense for also. Anything else from anyone? Sham, no questions this evening. Well, I don't think Sham's there. At least he's got himself muted if he is. Usually he has a, at least one question. Um, what level of education did uh, Surabala have? Is that known? What was? I don't know, dear. I don't know whether Surabala had much. She was crazy. So. Her husband was a physician, right? Didn't we read earlier that uh, that was a Holy Mother's brother who was a doctor and then he passed away? Yes. I, I don't know whether he'd become a, yeah, I guess he had become a doctor. He's, he was a medical student. So it's nine o'clock. We'll, we'll leave it at that.
Oh, beloved master, speech cannot hold thee nor mind, yet without thee we think not nor speak. Love, who art partial to none, we are equal before thy sight. Take her away of our pain, we salute thee, though we are blind. Come to the heart's dark cave and illumine the light of the light. Come to the heart's dark cave and strike thy match, O light of the light. Om Shanti 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 Peace, peace, peace be unto us and to all beings everywhere. So any last thoughts or questions from anyone? Okay. Tomorrow night, of course, we take up Swami Vivekananda's Jnana Yoga. And if ever you want an understanding of what is meant by the word maya this is where to look we'll take up chapter two of jnana yoga tomorrow night so good night everyone good night Until next Mr. time yeah. thank you jai shri guru maharaj ji ki jai durga 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 O oh, in Mother's loving and protective embrace, may you be safe, may you be healthy, may you be cheerful. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.